So what do you think that, how, why do you think what you say and what you do and, and, and the success you've had um, lands with people more? And um, and my hope is that to get more that, and that I want to get that more into my generation. And that's why I want to have this conversation. I think we need some guidance. Well, um, I think because I, you know, in my seventh decade, you get more courageous you, you, you've been through enough stuff. You've seen enough foolishness. You've seen where you wasted time. You wasted money. You see where you've given your power to people and systems. You've seen uh, what worked and didn't work. And you don't want to waste time. You don't want, you want to be able to help people avoid some of the things that your stumbling blocks. But at the same time, you know that some of those stumbling blocks, as I said, are the greatest teachers. I, I'm at a point in my life, Melinda, where I don't, I don't own anybody. I don't own anything. I am, I am constantly realizing that everything and everyone is nothing but my teacher, even my husband, my son, my grandson, my siblings, those that are part of what I do with women on the grow. You know, you would like people to stay. You would like people to love you. You would like people to uplift you. You would like people to do everything, you know, you want. But when you realize that people, their job is to find out who they are and what their purpose is. And it may not include you. It may be different than you. And when you learn to, to honor yourself and accept yourself, I accept who I am. There were times I didn't like myself. And there's still sometimes, you know, I'll look at a video and say, oh, oh look at that. Oh. But, you know, I'm doing so much better because it's like, Jewel, that's you. Accept who you are. Love who you are. And the more I love myself and all the flaws, because no diamond is perfect. Every diamond has a flaw. So I know I've got them, but I don't focus on the flaws. I focus on the radiance, the, the, the light that is coming through me. And that light that is coming through me only came through me because of all the polishing and the fire. Mm. And so as you get older, you realize you have less judgment and you're more embracing of people. And I think everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to be heard. And when you do that for yourself and you listen to yourself and you see yourself and you honor yourself instead of focusing, I didn't do that and I should have did that. And, and you're focusing on your regrets and you go into the cemetery of disappointments and you're watching the PowerPoint of your mistakes, you are going to re reflect judgment onto other people. Mm. Mm. And so I think because I'm very inclusive, um, I don't have this dogma about how I teach faith. I don't have this dogma of how people are supposed to live their lives. There may be some people living lives that I don't quite understand. I don't resonate with it, but I'm not going to judge it. <laughs> you see, it's like, I want to learn. I want to, and I've traveled so much. And I think this is something I want to impart to young people. And I know you just got back from Africa. You bought me a beautiful gift. Thank you so much for that. It's on my wall. But I think uh, traveling, I've traveled all my life since I was a little girl, my parents divorced. So I would, and my sisters, my two sisters and I would travel on a plane every summer to DC from Compton, California. And then we would come home and our bonus dad and my mom would take us camping. Mm -hmm. we, had a, we had a globe in the home, we had encyclopedias and uh, we called our bonus dad pops and he said, be open to other people, be open to other religions, be open, learn, expand your mind. And that set a foundation for me that I think people can feel that I'm not judgmental. I'm, I want to learn. And everybody's my teacher. They may teach me what I don't want to do and how I don't want to show up. Or they're teaching me, oh, you know what? I want to be like that. I want to do that. I want to have that. So they're teaching me through their example rather than being jealous rather than being competitive. Mm -hmm. And since you asked that question, what I hear a lot, Melinda, Jewel, you're so transparent. So I share a lot of things about my life. I'm like, oh, I don't believe I just said that. So I think in my transparency, I'm vulnerable and people appreciate that. I'm not trying to 
paint this picture that my life is perfect. I'm not trying to paint a picture that I know everything. I am a teacher and I am a student. Mm, the, the student piece is what I think makes you so approachable um, that I can ask these questions without fear of offending or, mm -hmm. you know, and so, or not giving the proper reverence. Um, mm -hmm. I can show that myself. And I think that's unique. I think that's unique to you. Um, and I'm sure there's others, but I don't think it's the majority of people, yeah. period. And so I think that's what makes you such a relevant and um, what relevant advisor, but also somebody that I want to, I can see myself, I want to grow into that. Um, so I'm so honored that you would say that. I really am. Um it's like getting a report card, like, okay, God, am I, am I on track? Am I doing, is this, am I on track with my assignment? Because I, I feel like I am on assignment and it's not about the money. It's not about the fame. Would I like to make more money? Yes. Would I like to have a broader uh, uh, sense of visibility? Yes, I would like that. But my assignment was to be authentic, to be real. Um, what I find Melinda, is there's so many women that come to me that say, you know what? I didn't have the greatest relationship with my mom. You know what? I don't have a sister. I don't have a confidant. And sometimes I do get a little tired because I take so many distress calls, but I'm built for that. Mm. And I realize that people are missing connection. And when you are dealing with life isolated, it's very unhealthy for your mental health. Uh, and so when you say that to me, I, I just so appreciate that because I'm self driven. I'm not, I don't, I've never had a teacher. I've never had a mentor. I've never, you know, I just, I just took a leap of faith for my corporate job and just picked up the microphone and started growing in front of my audiences Wow. And so when people give you a feedback that you made a difference, that you said something, that you gave them a pearl of wisdom, like, oh, good, because I I stepped onto the stage at a time there weren't any women of color doing what I'm doing. Mm. Now they're everywhere. Yay, mm -hmm. they're everywhere. But let me tell you, uh, in the 80s, I don't know of any black women that were doing what I was doing until I met black women at the African-American Women on Tour. So kudos to Maria Dowd. I was with that tour for 13 years. And there I met Dr. Maya Angelou, Iyanla Van Zandt, uh, Coretta Scott King, Susan Taylor, Queen Latifah. <laughs> I mean, Alice Walker. I, I mean, I could go on and on. So that was like a classroom for me. And this little girl, this little chocolate girl, from Compton, California, born in the Chocolate City, D.C., dared to pick up a mic and say, you know what? I'm a motivational speaker. And I did it. And the doors began to open. The calls started coming in. And I went from being uh, local to national to international. Wow. And so I have so many stories and I've been able to share some of them with you. But I wasn't really aware at the time, Melinda, that those things were so would be significant to pass along to other generations. I was just so in the moment. I was just like, just so happy and so on, just excited that I never really kept journals. Mm -hmm. I never kept journals. Uh, one of my books that's in my library, I have books up here, downstairs, everywhere. One of my books that I keep handy is probably up there, is The Power of Now. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Who's talking like this? My yeah, the Eckhart power Tolle. Out. Yes, Eckhart Tolle. That book, Yeah, that book anchored me. It re I realized that's me. I live in the now. And so reading and traveling and connecting with like-minded people will open up your mind and you'll say, oh my God, it's, it's so rewarding to have different parts of you opened and stimulated and activated and celebrated and then you just like oh yes because we're gonna be around people that don't get us my people don't get jewel diamond taylor and i'm gonna tell you for years i felt bad about that i, I can't worry about that mm -hmm. this is how i was designed 
And I'm very comfortable in my skin. I'm very comfortable knowing that there's things I know and believe. And there's some things I don't even know. I don't have a clue. Mm. Uh, I said, you know what? There comes a point when you have to realize that God is not going to answer every question. Mm. And can you be, can you keep living? Can you keep pushing? Can you keep pressing? Can you get up today to that one that's watching right now? You, you're so busy trying to figure it out. You're so busy blaming somebody. You're so busy shaming yourself. You're so busy calculating that you're not, you're missing today, this moment. Look mm. around you. Mm. Look around you. Look how far you've come. Mm -hmm. You're breathing. You're living. You're still here. <laughs> I went to a concert with my sisters yesterday, and we were celebrating my middle sister Jamila's birthday. And every time the three of us together, we always take a picture. And every time we take the picture, we say, ah, we're still here. <laughs> you know, you're like, wow. Because we know people didn't make it this far. My mother didn't make it this far. My son didn't make it this far. My father didn't make it this far. But I'm still here. And you think I'm going to use it, wasting it, complaining? No. Right. Live in the now. Live in the now, in the moment. So many people are dragged around with fear and worry. Oh, yeah, it happens to me sometimes. But because I have learned emotional uh know how to regulate my emotions. I catch myself. Oh, oh, come back, Jewel. Come back. Come back. You're way over there in the future or you're way back in the past. Come back. Hmm. And I've hmm. learned to be in the now because that's where your power lies. That's hmm. where your blessings lie. Hmm. And you center yourself and you ground yourself in the moment. And I teach people, you know, uh, when you really have an, a moment of anxiety, you ask yourself, what am I smelling right now? Okay, what am I seeing right now? What am I feeling right now? What am I hearing right now? And that brings you into the moment. You activate all five senses. And uh, many people that are depending upon drugs or depending upon a cup of coffee or a glass of wine or waiting for that call, uh, they're not in the moment and they need to ground themselves. Oh, you just got a bad phone call? Oh, somebody just said something to you? I had a day like that yesterday. Somebody said something to me. And I found myself off. I was like, ugh, ugh. And I, that emotional regulation, that conscious mind says, Jewel, see what you're doing? Stop it. Stop it. So you learn to parent yourself. I have to parent. I, I've been a motherless and fatherless child since the 80s. That means for 50 years, <laughs> almost 50 years, I have not had a physical parent. I had to parent Jewel. Drink mm -hmm. your water. Get your rest. Speak up, tell the truth, track your money, get up, exercise, handle your business. And you still, you're still doing this. Is that something that is part of just who you are? I have three questions. Is that mm -hmm. part of who you are now? I mean, it sounds, it definitely is, but is that something that you have to work out all the time? Because I think some people are like, I gotta do this for the rest of my life. Because I work in the healthcare field. People have to learn new behavior because unfortunately- yeah. I'm sick, right? And they have to learn your behavior. So this is something I have to do for the rest of my life. And everything that I share with them is everything you just said. So it's not, mm. like, you know, brand new science says that we got to do this and live longer. You actually are bringing up what science has said, but this is something you've known within yourself and maybe you've heard it from your elders too. But well, you see when somebody says, do I have to do this the rest of my life? That's the child in them. I don't want to do it. And mm. so, and it's also the mind because the mind does not, I mean, science has proven the mind resists change. It doesn't like anything new. Oh, I remember when I went from elementary school to junior high school, it's like, oh, it's so big. Well, I remember where my room is. And I went from middle school to high school. Oh my God, this campus is so big. I got to go to six different rooms. And well, I remember the teacher's name. And then you go to college. Oh my God, this is different. And you go to new job. Oh my God. And we're always living with this fear because the mind says we're doing something different. So when you get people, when you try to help people to change their habits, it's a natural thing to resist. And this is something I like helping people to understand so they don't quit on themselves. Yeah, you're going to you're gonna have some resistance. Yeah, it seems scary. Yeah, you're going to be intimidated. But understand that's part of the process. Then you're not surprised. Like, oh, she told me that. Yep. 
it's going to hurt. You're going to, your muscles are going to hurt because you're exercising. Yep. It's going to be different. People may not like you. People may leave you. Uh, yep. You may fail the first test, but you got to understand the brain does not like doing something new. And the more you do it, now it becomes a habit. You know, I teach a little bit of sign language when I'm teaching because I love visual uh, teaching. And so in sign language, this is habit. That means that we are tied to doing the same thing over and over again. So when you realize you are what? A creature of what? Habit. habit. Mm -hmm. And what is creature based on the word create? So we create our lifestyle. We create our health. We create our finances. We create our relationships based on our habits. Do you have the habit of being mean and snappy and irritable? Do you have the habit of not communicating? Do you have the habit of eating too much sugar? Do you have the habit of, of lying? Do you have the habit of being dramatic? You create out of your habits how you show up. It's in the subconscious mind. And when you say, let's do something different, let's be kind. Let's be patient. Let's be, let's practice wisdom. Let's put that down. The mind says, uh-uh. <laughs> And you had to say, put that cigarette down. You know, you, you don't need that piece of cake. You just want to grab it because you are a creature of habit. So mm -hmm. once you get the awareness and you say, if I do that, what is the consequence or what is the subsequence? What does subsequence mean? Okay. So if I keep eating sugar, sugar is my addiction. Mm -hmm. If I keep eating sugar, it's going to ruin my teeth. I could become diabetic. Uh, so I'm on this thing where I've reduced my sugar because I don't want the consequence. Okay. But if I change my habit and I drink more water, I eat whole fruits, I eat more salad, what's the subsequence? What A subsequence is what follows a behavior. So mm. subsequently, subsequently, because you change your habit, what follows? Weight loss, glowing skin, more energy. That's Good. a subsequence. Got gotcha. you. Gotcha. But most people will not deal with the consequence. You keep spending like that, you're going to, what's the consequence? Oh, you're going to be broke. Your credit's going to be bad. You're going to be struggling. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be bitter. You're going to be angry. You're going to, you know, could lose your home. That's the consequence of not handling your finances. But what's the subsequence of breaking the habit and mm. creating a new habit? Mm. So we need those. We'll follow. Got you. Got you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Um, I feel like some of the things I hear come up from this generation also is, um, well, this is this is who I am. Mm -hmm. I want to because people are being encouraged to be okay with who they are. And you know, I know that you've mentioned this in the past, but you've seen a lot of pendulum swinging. So you know, we're we're breaking some habits of our culture that are unhealthy to create, and we got to create new habits. But some of the things I'm hearing was, is like, well, you know, if I'm having a bad day and I reacted this way, this is just who I am. And I have the right to share my feelings because we're learning also in this I know. to share feelings, right? And I feel like we're being, there's, I think we need to keep some things of the past because there was some positive, subse there was some positive subsequence. I want to use the term correctly, um, mm -hmm. action behind it. So as the pendulum swings of us, swings of us being able to own who we are and own our feelings and have a right to be who we think we are in this collective community. Um, do you have any, can you speak to how we can take ownership of these feelings and these mm -hmm. actions that we're having? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but also feel like we are worthy and it's okay to show up and share our feelings and understand who we are and take ownership of our personality. Did that make did I did that make sense? That question makes sense. That's why I love you because you ask good questions, <laughs> and there's so there's so many layers to that. First of all, when somebody says that's just the way I am, you know what that that's resistance. That's resistance. I don't want to change. I don't want to change. If you say, "Oh, well, thanks for pointing that out. Maybe I am full of rage. Maybe I am full of bitterness," and you don't understand the backstory, but I don't have to act out. So let me kind of check myself before I wreck myself. Mm. That's accountability. Okay. So you, when I'm feeling things, yes, I have a right to say to Jewel, 
Oh, Jewel, right now you're sad. Oh, Jewel, you're bitter. Oh, Jewel, you're pissed off. Oh, Jewel, you feel left out. Okay, now, what are we going to do about that? Notice it. And what I say to myself, let it pass through. I'm not going to push it away. I'm going to let it pass through. I was having quite a day yesterday with all kinds of emotions. I was like, uh-uh, let it pass through. If I deny it and suppress it, suppression leads to depression. Yeah, I'm feeling sad today. Yes, I'm feeling pissy today. Yes, I'm feeling used today. Yes, I'm feeling weary. That's a conversation with me. Okay. Okay. See? So See? everybody and out you, there? Everybody yeah, and like, okay, okay. yeah. And I don't say, oh, well, Jewel, Jewel, you're, you're, you're Dr. Jewel Diamond Taylor. You shouldn't feel that way. No, wait a minute. Excuse me. Hold up. Uh-uh, boo-boo. Uh -huh. I have a right to feel this way. But I'm going to let it pass through because if I let it take residence in me, rather than being a victim, now I'm walking around and I'm up mad and I'm snappy and I'm angry and I'm going to have a car accident. I'm going to lose my wallet. I'm going to burn the dinner. I'm going to say something that I can't take back. Uh-uh, Jill. That's the parents that stop it. So when my little Cody, six years old, starts to pout, Grandma, I said, oh, so you're upset right now? Okay, sit right there till you finish being upset. Hmm. I let him feel it. I don't shame him. Do you know how long it lasts? It's over because I gave him space to feel what he's feeling. You shouldn't act like that. You're so ungrateful. That You're disrespectful. I used to hear that a lot as a child. You're so disrespectful. I wasn't allowed to feel what I was feeling. Hmm. So as a grandparent, you, you have this hindsight an insight to say, wait a minute, how can we modulate that? Mm. A six-year-old has feelings. He wants what he wants in the moment. It's in the moment. So let him have the moment rather than shaming him and hollering at him or spanking or chastising or making them go in the, it's like, oh, so you're angry? Okay, go ahead, honey. Let me know when you finish yeah. being angry. Next thing you know, he's hugging me. You know why? I gave him permission to feel it. If it starts at a younger age, you'll be able to have that emotional regulation when you get older. Wow. And the only reason I have it now, Melinda, is because I've been teaching it to thousands of women. Mm. And out of me teaching them, it was teaching me. Mm. So I acknowledge when, when my mother passed, I didn't know about emotional regulation. I hid it. I was smiling. I'm fine. How you doing? I'm fine. And inside, I was upset. Nobody's asking me about my mother. Nobody's checking on me. Nobody's comforting me. You know why? Because I had the space on. I'm good. Mm. I didn't know how to deal with grief. I didn't know how to say I need help. I didn't know how to say I'm sad. I didn't even, I wasn't in touch with sadness. I didn't dare let it out because I didn't know if people would, you know, help me, support me, judge me. So I held it in. Now, when my son passed, it's like, how you doing today? It's not a good day. I'm hurting today. Check with me tomorrow. Do you need anything? Yes. I was in touch with it. And it was healthy because I wasn't going to just walk around sad all the time. And that particular moment, that particular day, I was feeling the heaviness. Then I let it pass through. Hmm. I let it pass through. I have a right to be sad. That's my son. I'm not, I don't have to be the public face. I'm good. I'm fine. That's one of the biggest lies I used to tell myself. I'm fine. I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest lies people tell themselves. I'm good. You know you're not. Hmm. But hmm. you have to. It's through connection that we find a safe place to tell the truth without judgment. Mm. It's a connection, not an isolation. And so what happens, sometimes you chose the wrong person to connect with and they hurt mm. you, they betrayed you, they weren't there for you. And so you tell yourself, oh, I'll never do that again. Mm. And then that pendulum swings all the way to isolation. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't trust people. Uh, I'm good. I don't need nobody. You can't get through this life without people. You need people. People who need people are the luckiest people. And when I say need, I don't mean desperation and attachment. 
But what I'm saying for your mental health, we need healthy connections with people that see us yes. and are willing to listen to us. Yes. They don't have to fix it, but can they just be present in that moment? And what I do is that the people in my life that I find that safe place, I have a phrase for it. I call it shaking the rug. I want to shake the rug. Let me get this out of the rug. Because you know, if I don't shake this rug, whoo, mm -mm, I got I got to gotta get it out. I got to get it out. And then I'm fine. I'm, I'm letting it pass through. I'm not letting it dominate my day, my conversation, my spirit. I'm shaking the rug. Okay, I'm done now. I'm through. It's over. 